A few years back, when I was helping to facilitate an RCIA journey, the, the uh, 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 Rite of Christian Initiation of Adults, that uh, a fella came in, and his background, he came from a more fundamentalistic kind of church. And, but he was coming, and he was being open to exploring the Catholic Christianity. But right away, I remember uh, he brought up issues that I'm certainly aware of, to having been Protestant one time myself. He said, well, you know, he said, I think Jesus is the center of our faith. Of course, I said, yeah, Catholics think that too, really. Okay, but Jesus, is, and we should focus only on Jesus. He's the Redeemer. He's the Savior. He's the Lord. We don't need to talk about anybody else or think about anybody else. And then his point was, uh, uh, you know, why do you talk about Mary? Uh, she's not the Redeemer. And he probably didn't bring up John the Baptist, but John the Baptist is one of the saints. He said, those saints, we don't need to talk about them. It's just focus on Jesus. And I remember I asked him, because other people have come to me with this point. I said, well, okay, Jesus may it made a difference in your life. Obviously, that's beautiful. Savior, Lord, tell me. Did Jesus make that difference just one day in prayer, on a walk in the park? He just came and immediately illuminated you. How did you come to this sense of Jesus? And then he talked about a couple friends and family members who inspired him by their example, by their faith. And I remember kind of saying, you know, well, why do you need them? You don't need other people. That's what you just told me. All you need is Jesus. And of course, he said, well, other people help bring us to Jesus. And I said, yeah. And that's what we talk about as Catholic Christians. We need Jesus directly, and God works through humans to bring us to faith, to bring us to God, to bring us to Jesus. And so making the point that our Blessed Mother Mary, you know, she was asked to bear the child. She could have said no. But she was so open in her whole life as a young woman to doing God's will that even God knew when the angel spoke to her that she was the kind of woman who would say yes, and she did. What if she hadn't have said yes? Oh, well, maybe God would have worked in another way, but she did say yes, and her yes, not only at that time of the angel, but throughout her life, including even watching her son die. Her yes, her faith, her commitment makes a difference and can inspire us. And without that faith, we wouldn't have Jesus born. And today, I didn't talk about it then, John the Baptist. You know, we, we see in the scripture today, he saw himself as a servant, just as Mary had said that too. He was a servant of the Lord from the time he was born, and he grew up with that consciousness. And had he not laid the groundwork, if you will, planted the seeds to say the Messiah is coming, don't miss him, recognize him, open up to him, follow him. If he hadn't said that, Jesus might not have had the same impact. The Lord our God needs Jesus, and Jesus needs all of us, each to do our part, to make a difference, to prepare the way of the Lord. I want to ask a question of you now, and I'm going to ask a few brave souls to uh, comment, but I want everybody to, to go within. And we've often mentioned we need to have that conversation within ourselves and believe that the Holy Spirit is in there too. But here's the question. Who in your life, what person or people have influenced you, maybe planted the seeds, maybe set the example, maybe helped you to be open and prepare the Lord to come more deeply into your life? Uh, just think about that for a moment, who those people are, maybe what their values had. And as I said, I'll come to a couple folks to comment, but everybody think about it. And I'll get out my trusty, uh, to, in case some of you are going to speak. Don't worry, we won't spend a long time with this. I'll only take about 100 responses and we'll go on. Okay, who's got, who's got a comment and willing to make it? Okay, here we go. I'll give you the talk real nice, loud in the mic. My grandmother and my husband. Okay, what about them? My give grandmother me. lived it. My husband lives it. Okay. And that influenced me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. A grandmother and a husband who live it. And 
Obviously, that's an influence. I got to get at least one person back here. So find somebody. Everybody's looking around. They're not looking at me. Okay, there you go. Nice and loud. My mother. And what about your mom? She just lives an exemplary life. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And I can see the depth of what that means for you and meant for you. Yeah, her mother, exemplary life. Who else? One more person up here, and then we'll go on. And get somebody all the way up front. Okay, here we go. My brother, Brother Roger, okay. who passed away, yeah. he was, uh, I didn't realize at the time, but boy, was he an influence. <laughs> okay, thank you for that. Your brother was an influence, and it strikes me, you didn't realize it at the time. Sometimes we don't. But looking back, wow, look at the impact this person's had on our life. Thank you. So I'm sure all of us can come up with somebody and what those virtues or values uh, uh, that struck us, that led us to a real faith in the Lord. Now I want you to take another moment and just think about this. Who are the people in your life that possibly you are called by your example, uh, uh, by, uh, and none of us are perfect, so it's not about that, by your faith. Who are the people in your life that in a real way, someday, 10 years, 20 years from now here, when people are asked about who influenced your faith, who gave you a richer sense of the Lord, they might mention your name. Not for some ego reason, but just to know. So take a moment. And think about anybody in your life. And again, maybe you're already having that influence and you're planting seeds. Maybe you don't see it yet. Sometimes parents with children. Or maybe uh, as you take this moment, there's somebody you could more consciously be an example or share faith or encourage them to come to know the Lord. Take a moment and think about that. I'm not going to ask for you to share. Just a, a moment to yourself, to the Lord. And to know in that responsorial psalm that we praise God for each of us is wonderfully made. To believe that about ourselves and one of the things we can do in faith is help other people to believe that about themselves rooted in faith. I finally want to share an area that I think all of us hopefully are or can be more so an influence with those kind of values that come from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. The values that Blessed Mother Mary and John the Baptist had and inspire us with. You know, we don't have to go on lots of detail, and even though there's a lot of different opinions about everything going on in our culture today, we certainly know in government, at every level, especially at the top, we know uh, in, in our culture, the whole cultural influences of media and so forth, uh, we know even in our family life. There may be areas that we need to be more of a presence of Jesus too. And again, thinking of core values. Very important that maybe our culture and our society needs now more than ever. Just to name a few of them. Integrity. Integrity. I'm sure all the people that inspire us, they had integrity uh, in who they were and how they lived and, and what they did. Uh, and, and so, again... As we look at that, we come back and look at ourselves. How are we? Is that an important value we live? Maybe we don't even have to think of it consciously, but just we do live with integrity and somehow that's grounded in our faith. Uh, and obviously Jesus did that. Compassion. Compassion. You know, Jesus reached out to all people. We have an issue in our world today, in our United States today, on many levels. We can talk about, uh, you know, the top levels in government, but we all have to look at ourselves, too, and say, where's our compassion? Are we as compassionate enough? You know, Jesus reached out to people who were marginalized, reached out to people that other people didn't want to have anything to do with, reached out and, and was very inclusive of the diverse people in his own culture, helping each of them to see they were wonderfully made and know that, <clears throat> and know that they were loved. Compassion. A couple more. Justice. Justice. Ju you know, our, our whole proclamation is justice for all. And so, again, whether at any level in the culture and government, how are we fostering justice for everyone? 
And obviously, you know, I'm sure a lot of us are thinking about this immigration issue and what happened there. there there's complexities there, too. I mean, uh, there need to be certain guidelines, but whatever the guidelines are, they need to be rooted in integrity, compassion, justice, and kindness. Kindness. This for us on every level. Pro people are saying today, even for many years, we're not as kind to one another. We don't seek as much to better understand the other, even if they're coming from a different place in our own family. Do we need to be a family and a United States c culture and c to show kindness? We know how kind Jesus was in reaching out to people. So, taking a moment, going back, for every one of us here, what can each of us do? How maybe, because you are here listening to these scriptures and this word right now, how might the Lord be saying, this is what I want you to do in your family, in the surrounding culture, in the United States as a, as a whole? What can each of us do? What does the Lord want us do to make that difference that somehow, like John the Baptist, we prepare the way for hearts to be open to and influenced by the Lord Jesus Christ and by his integrity, his compassion, his justice, his kindness. Take that quiet moment. God bless you.